Why is the day of Pentecost important? I, student of the word, how are you doing today? In this Bible study, I will explore the importance of the day of Pentecost. I'll not focus on the definition of Pentecost, but on its importance. What happened on that day and every day that we accept the word of God is life changing. Pentecost is more than a celebration for it is a fulfillment of promise that Jesus made to his disciples and a fulfillment of prophecy of the Lord God. I'll look at a few points which you will find interesting and which you might find very unique. If you're new to this channel, I am Leroy Daly of Blogging About the Word. On that website and on this YouTube channel, I teach Christians how to better understand their Bible. I utilize the Word of God, word upon word, line upon line, precept on precept. Precept must be an equally corresponding precept or else we'll have confusion and misinformation in the church. And as I always say, we need no more. So in this book Bible study of the book of Acts, I am at Acts chapter 2. And a brief overview of that chapter is appropriate at this time. Acts 2, 1 to 4 describes the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Acts 2, 5 to 13 chronicle the mixed reaction about the meaning and the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Acts 2, 14 to 40, Peter explanation about what happened on the day of Pentecost. And Acts 2, 41 to 47, the people received Peter's words and acted accordingly. So that's my breakdown of it. So let's get on with it. Now, the next, the next verse is a very popular one. It's popular among a certain group of people. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. Acts 2 verse 1. I've known that verse of scripture from I was a, a very small child. All these disciples were one. They had identical expectation and they were in one place thinking and petitioning the Lord for the same thing. The fulfillment of the promise of the Father upon them. In John 3, after Jesus explained to Nicodemus how to be born again, he also informed him of the born again believer's status. I did a number of videos on the born again experience. I'll leave links below in the description to them. Jesus says to Nicodemus in John 8, 38, the wind blow it where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but can but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. He says, Everyone that is born of the Spirit is like the wind. Listen to the last phrase of this um, text. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. So everyone that's born of the Spirit is like the wind. Jesus is the only person I know who compares the animate with the inanimate, a living person with the wind. I wrote extensively on this in my second book, The Golden Candlestick, The Seven Spirit of God. I wrote about this there in that. Let's continue. So he says, Every, everyone that is born of the Spirit is like the wind. This is a reference to the rapture of the church. It will happen like a wind in an instant in the blink of an eye. 
Interestingly, the Bible also describes the first outpouring of the Holy Ghost as a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Acts 2 And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Acts 2 2 This is the coming of the Spirit of God. We hear the sound of it coming but how do we know and are certain that that sound is from God? And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. Acts 2 verse 3. But what is the manifestation of him coming? What is the sign that he, the Holy Ghost, has come? The fire is not an indication that the sound is from God. It's not the fire. In this instant, on the day of Pentecost, it's not the fire that sat upon them, which tells us that this, the fire is to indicate the come upon. Because remember, the Spirit always come up on selected men, come on their heads. The fire is there visually for, for the, each apostle, each disciple to know that it, it has come. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Acts 2, 4. Every manifestation of the initial outpouring of the Holy Ghost is accompanied by speaking with other tongues. I've touched on this previously, so I won't go much into this again. And I'll leave a link in the description to that below. Initial here not only means the first outpouring of, on the day of Pentecost, but also the first outpouring for each believer. So the initial outpouring of the Holy Ghost, it's speaking to the Pentecost experience, the, the early church experience, but it also speaks to each believer's initial experience with the Holy Ghost. It happened on the day of Pentecost. It also happened in Samaria, it happened with Cornelius, and it happened with Apostle Paul. I had an identical experience, and so must you. Each initial outpouring of the Holy Ghost must be accompanied by speaking with other tongues. And all these people I just listed experienced it. There is no substitute for it. And as I explained, really it's for you, the believer, to know without a doubt that the Spirit has come. So the day of Pentecost is crucial because it's a prophecy fulfilled. The Lord spoke of this day via Joel, the prophet. He says, And he shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. Joel 2.27 In an earlier Bible study, I encourage the female viewers to pay close attention to Acts 1 verse 14. And this is why, before the day of Pentecost, the Spirit of the Lord never come upon any female none whatsoever. He came only upon men. And those men were prophets, priests, kings, or specially selected and anointed by God to perform certain tasks. Like Jehu, those were the men who got the come up and experience. Remember Samson? He's one of them. So he never came on a woman, not even on Queen Esther on the day of Pentecost. All that changed. For on that day, he came on all flesh. And we find this in Joel 2.28. But all flesh doesn't mean everyone. Because the Bible says all flesh it doesn't mean everyone. Now again, when we interpret the Bible, context is important. Context is important. 
and I'll bring this out in a little while. Instead of the Spirit of the Lord only coming upon selected men based on their status today, that's the day of Pentecost, and today in our lives, he comes on all men and all women. And Joel says, And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And remember I said all flesh don't mean everyone. I'll explain. And I'll read the scripture first. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Joel 22, 28. And <clears throat> I'll continue. And also upon the servants. And note how the scripture distinguish between male and female servants with this phrase. And the handmaids. So servants here refer to both male and female. But the scripture goes a step further and says, I'll pour my spirit also upon the handmaids. In those days will I pour out my spirit. Joel 2, 29. Now, what's the reason for all of this? On the day of Pentecost, did the Holy Ghost come on the heads of everyone in the city? Nope. The Holy Ghost didn't come on everybody in Jerusalem. Yet the scripture says, all flesh. But all here, meaning all male and all female. Initially, it was only on selected men. Not even on all men, but on selected men. Now it is on all men, even servants. Previously, they had to be, these men had to be kings, prophet, or priest, or selected and anointed before the Holy Ghost would come upon them. Now, no, that has changed. Every man can have that experience. Every woman now, and that's where the status of women have changed, in that they are included in this celestial experience. Before, they were not a part of it. But Pentecost signals a change in the status of women, where the Lord, Spirit of the Lord, come upon them. Now, only on those 120 who were in the upper room did the Spirit of the Lord come on. So even though the Spirit says, on all flesh, all flesh here mean men, young men, old men. It means servants, male servants, female servants, all female, all men, all female and all male. That's what all flesh near means, not on everybody. So the scripture definitely explains what all flesh means. Similarly today, the only believers who will experience the come upon of the Holy Ghost are those who are waiting, expecting, and actively seeking God as they wait. Because, as I said in our previous Bible study, the Spirit has already been given. Now we just need to receive it and manifest our receipt of it. And that depends on each person. How long are you going to wait? A day? I did a Bible study to that. And I'll leave a link in the description below. So, the day of Pentecost signals a change in status primarily for women. On that day, all women, even queens and handmaids or female servants, received the come upon of the Holy Ghost for the first time. They were eligible for it for the first time. Why? Because Mary, the mother of Jesus, and the, and the women, the, the other women who were in the upper room, they received him. Before the day of Pentecost, they had no chance of receiving him. But at Pentecost, they did fulfilling Joel's prophecy. And fulfilling the prophecy of Jesus, 
where he told his disciple, I'll go to my father, and if I go, I will send the comforter. And when he come, he will teach you of all things and bring all things to your remembrance. This is a fulfillment of that. Because the comforter has come. No, the comforter has come. So men also benefited though, because no all men could have this experience, even servants, even servants, even men who are servants. Before, they had no chance. They were excluded. But at Pentecost, men who are servants were included. The advent of Pentecost has changed so many things. It's not possible to speak about them in this short Bible study. However, I have written <coughs> of them at length in my book, Living Soul in the Image of God. In closing, buy this book and read about the other spiritual changes which happened which happen on the day of Pentecost. Finally, like this video and if you want to receive notification when I upload a new video, hit the bell icon, you will be notified. And if you are new to this channel, I implore you, if you like my teaching, to subscribe. I thank you for your time and I bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. The blessings of the Lord are on you. I bless you. And if the Lord permits, I'll see you in another video soon.